Hello, Princess. Welcome, members of the court. But welcome, new members of the court and new cruising members of the court. On a cruise ship, there's a lot of things that are like home. There's a lot of things that are like travel. And there's a lot of things that are very similar to hotels like your stateroom. But this is a ship, so there are a lot of differences that you'd like to know about ahead of time. So in this episode of How to Cruise, let's talk about ooh, your cruise ship bathroom. Before we even get into the bathroom, let me warn you about the step. I suppose in some of the more premium spaces, uh, they have engineered it a little bit differently, but uh, for us plebs down in here in ocean views and regular balconies, there is always a step to get into the bathroom. And the light switch is almost always on the outside of the bathroom. So yeah, don't, don't play tricks on people. For the most part, and on a majority of cabins on a cruise ship, the bathroom is pretty much just what you would find on land, except it is space optimized. Or, well, let's just call it small because that's what it is. This is the bathroom in my regular Ocean View stateroom, and any normal person probably can touch every wall with outstretched arms and, well, <laughs> not even outstretched that much. So, yeah, standing in here, there is pretty much everything right next to you. In fact, I can't even hold the camera outstretched without uh, running into something which creates this really weird and, well, cool effect. Certain categories, suites and above, would have a larger bathroom. Of course, some cruise lines have just chosen to have larger bathroom spaces for practical reason, Disney being the most well-known. In fact, their ships are equipped with uh, two bathrooms to accommodate families. Included in the price of your cruise is all the basic stuff like a sink and, well, it's a well, pretty standard operation. There you go. You swivel back and forth, cold, hot. Here on MSC, they have a liquid soap dispenser, although some cruise lines still give you soap. And if you ask for one, they will give you. You might notice you don't see a trash can in here, but it is hidden right there. And uh, this is for... Well, um, ladies, you can figure that out. All right, there is usually, but not always, some kind of shelf. Go back and watch some videos. I have brought this up a number of times. Here they do have two nice shelves. Well, I haven't actually used them except for my unused can of Barbasol. <laughs> this towel rack has been uh, empty the entire time. And uh, well, there you go, where People spend time, depending on what they've eaten, drank, or whatever, and the shower. Alrighty then. I guess let's just start off with what everybody really, really wants to know about. Uh, yeah, the toilet. There are always a number of warnings about what to do and what not to do with the toilet. Number of items MSC doesn't want you throwing in there are, well, kind of paper and... I don't know. I don't know what the rest of that stuff is, honestly. But whatever it is, they want you to throw it in the trash can. Apparently the only things that they want you to put in the toilet is toilet paper. Well, okay, you can make some assumptions there. And in terms of operations, you just close the lid and push the button. Now, why do you have to close the lid? Because in the open position, you cannot see the button. So let's just close lid, push button. And all your problems go away. Now, very important. Hopefully this will never happen to you, but well, let's talk about what to do if you push the button and nothing happens. Ooh, I have seen on several occasions cruisers in absolute panic mode in the hallway because that exact thing just happens to them or just happened to them. It can be a bit uh, disconcerting because no one really wants to talk about it, but this is what you need to know. The first thing that you need to do if you push the button and nothing happens is nothing. Yes, if nothing happens, just do nothing because 999 times out of a thousand, uh, there's nothing wrong. And here's why. The flushing system on a cruise ship and most ships does not work the same way as it does on land. It is a vacuum system. So what happens when you push the button, it actually releases a little latch which allows a valve to open and then there's a timer mechanism and after it has, well, done its job, it closes and that's it, ready for the next flush. However, during peak times, shall we say, in the morning on embarkation day, as soon as the staterooms are ready or around all aboard and when people are getting ready for dinner, 
the uh, system can fall behind and the, well, the vacuum that makes this all work drops below a certain level necessary to actually trigger the mechanism. So this is why all you have to do is just wait when the system catches up and the vacuum reaches a level that will trigger your unit, uh, it will flush. Now, uh, you will hear a click usually, and uh, that means the latch is released and it is ready to go. So you just kind of have to wait. But here is the kicker. You have no control over when that actually will happen. It can be a few seconds, it can be a few minutes, it can be more than a few minutes. That has happened to me several times, occasionally, or I say most of the time, it's maybe 10 to 15 seconds later. Although I do remember one incident, I believe it was on Norwegian Getaway, where it was, I don't know, it felt like it was close to 10 minutes because you kind of forget about it. And once it happens, it is kind of startling <laughs> because it will happen at just any random time. So yeah, don't worry. It will eventually catch up. You'll be fine. You just don't know when. Though I suspect the question on everyone's mind now is can you use it while it's waiting to flush? Hmm. Yes, if you don't mind being surprised. And don't worry, Mythbusters already did a show on this. No, uh, if it does trigger, you will not become a giant suction cup and end up trapped on the, uh, well, on the throne, if you will. There is enough of an air gap between the seat and the chamber to where that won't happen. So if you really have to, sure. Let's spend some time in the shower because yep, there's a little more in here than I think a lot of people might realize. Among common elements is this right here. This is just a clothesline that attaches over there. And this is where you're supposed to hang, I guess, dripping things so they can just drip and go into the drain. Uh, it's a pretty simple mechanism. You've probably seen these in hotels all over the world. You just pull out the string, bring it over here, and boom, there you go. A clothesline in the shower. Now, I've never used this because you rarely end up with dripping clothes and they always have hooks on the outside for uh, that purpose. That's what I wore uh, on the slides yesterday and even getting off the slides, they weren't really dripping, so it's easier to put them there. A lot of the cruise lines will provide some kind of soaps in the shower here on MSC. They do provide a separate shampoo and shower gel. It just depends on what they have and the level of the line. A grab bar for those days when the ship is moving and you might need a little bit of assistance. And down there, something that confused me for quite a while, but it is, uh, well, well, whoever wants to shave their legs, this makes it easier. You just prop your foot up and I guess it makes everything closer. The shower heads themselves are usually the same as what you find on land. This one is adjustable uh, between different jet settings. I have it on the wide setting. No reason to ever change that, but they do have the finer and mist controls and things like that. Go ahead, experiment with it. You probably can't break it. But, oh, and this does adjust up and down, so. Well, yeah, some people still have problem fitting there, but you could do that if uh, you need. Now, one thing that I usually only see on cruise ships, can't really recall ever seeing it on land, is this type of faucet. Now, uh, what's interesting about it is not the separate uh, temperature and uh, volume controls, that's fairly common. It's uh, the little buttons that are on both sides. Now, here on MSC, they have it on both. Some cruise ships, I've only seen it on one side, on the temperature side, but uh, consider them turbo buttons. This is the temperature control in on its coldest setting, and then you turn it this way, hotter, 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 and it will stop here. However, you push the button, and it keeps going, yes, for a turbo hot shower. Yeah, that's pretty far. Now, I've only had it set here at this limit, and it's been perfectly fine. They do want you to test the shower because they don't want people scalded. Uh, that would not be very good. And uh, same thing over here. I guess this is, well, it's a turbo button for volume. And uh, well, I'm not gonna demonstrate that because, well, yeah, uh, we would get all wet. So that's what the little button is for. And uh, be careful. It's always good to turn it on and test the temperature because what you're used to at home might be a little bit different here. 
fun story on my high school senior cruise. Uh, yes, at my high school, the seniors took a cruise. Doesn't everybody do that? Anyway, I don't remember what ship this was, but we were in the Bahamas at the beach all day out in the sun, and uh, my scalp got burned because at that point in my life, I never it never really occurred to me to put sunblock in my hair. Uh, that was a lesson, a very painful lesson to learn because that evening on the ship, there was no cold water. Yes, uh, the one thing to go out on that night was the cold water. Uh, and they knew it, they apologized. <laughs> but oh boy, was it rough taking a hot only shower with, uh, yes, a sunburned head. Ouch. Also, take note of the drain in the shower. Here on MSC Seascape, uh, this drain cover does not come off. However, on some cruise ships, uh, particularly if it's round, it does pop up and there is a little hair trap under there. And I remember on Odyssey of the Seas, I guess uh, it had gotten a little bit clogged up and the shower wasn't draining, so I told my uh, stateroom attendant. And while I was gone, he came and cleared it. But it happened again for other reasons. And uh, yeah, I, I realized you could just pop the lid off clean it out and everything is good to go. So um, this, these, these little openings here, they're nice and large. The plumbing is probably pretty substantial, so I guess they're not too worried about that. Closing out the rest of the features, this is an air vent. It is on a constant gentle suction. You can hear it uh, whooshing. Uh, this just extracts humidity from the bathroom so it doesn't go into the stateroom and overload the uh, air con system. And uh, it's also kind of just bad for ships. If you've owned a boat with a cabin, you know what I'm talking about. You'll also find a combo European and US style shaver outlet. This one has a cover. I guess they don't want to put GFCIs. And um, well, there's one of those in case you need to tidy up uh, after yourself. Ugh. And yes, well, there's always a TP and if you run low, they're more than happy to replace it. Uh, believe me. These, uh, well, <laughs> I keep thinking they're candle holders. I'm actually not sure what the intent is, but uh, well, these do not, oh yeah, these do, okay, these do pop out. I suppose you could just, I don't know, pop a toothbrush or something in there, or could be a, oh, could be a glass or a cup or something. I don't, I, okay, what does everyone think those are supposed to be? Because they're, they're kind of large and kind of an odd shape. Finally, towels. You will usually get uh, at least two sets of three sizes of towels. So these are the little hand towels. And here we have, well, I'm not really sure if this is a washcloth. Uh, it's the medium sized towel. And then two bath towels. Now, I only use these and I, I ask for more to be replenished. Oh, oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you also get a bath mat. And here on MSC Seascape, it's actually uh, stored right there on that little ledge. I think we're done. I mean, it's not a very big space. Stepping outside, if you are observant, you might wonder what these panels are outside every cabin. Well, this is where the really important stuff is. All the fittings and connections that make the bathroom actually work, they're out there, so they are accessible. If you noticed, the main stuff, the stuff that probably breaks a lot, the shower and the toilet are right up against the wall. They open the door and there's everything. And those are some of the oddities of a typical cruise ship bathroom. Wow, I really hope this was useful. If not, let me know. If it was, let me know. And I will say that uh, I do tend to take nice, long, luxurious showers on cruises. Uh, yes, it's one of the glories of being out here so much. I occasionally do run out of my preferred towel, uh, but that is okay because when it happens, it really is just a reminder of why I am thankful for my problems. Oh.